So I'm with Reverend Miriam Pakalesi, um, who was a member at Eastwood United Church, where I was a member. Some time ago, you had a call from a minister, no names, about a gay man in the church needing a pastoral carer. How did that call go? What was your reaction? And what was the subsequent conversation with your partner? Um, yeah, I was pleased to get the call because it meant that the minister that I was with at Eastwood was prepared to acknowledge um, that I had more skills in this area than him and that we could work together. So I was excited by the opportunity um, to, to help someone. Yeah. Um, and when I mentioned it to my partner, she moved, yeah, I thought he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> so she was all fine. Yeah. So when, it, when you realised it was me, um, what was your reaction? I'm like, oh, okay. And that's when my partner kind of went, yeah, I thought he was gay. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Oh, opportunity to get to know you. I didn't really know you that well at that point. You yeah. were just someone in the congregation. I just remember you being quite tall. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and what do you think was simply Tori had a better gaydar than... Oh, she always has a better gaydar than me. <laughs> I see people for people. I don't see people in their boxes. I just see people as people. Until they tell me something, then I, I don't see it. Unless someone is extremely camp mm -hmm. or someone is extremely butch in the lesbian world, I don't necessarily see it. I just see them as a person. Do you recall our first conversation and what that was like? Yeah, I was thinking about that. What I recall partly was that you were very clear that this was a pastoral conversation and that you had um, taken care of the mental health aspect because at the time I was working as a mental health chaplain and you wanted to make sure this was not that and, and I was clear about that and other than that we just talked and you drank the coffee and I had the hot chocolate or the milkshake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the crises I felt and was an obligation to tell everybody, particularly the church boards that I'm on and my clients. You and also actually my psychologist counselled against this and encouraged me to set up a strategy to work out who to tell, why to tell and what was the benefit for me. What was the rationale around that advice? I think sometimes when you're coming out, you're excited and you're on the journey and you just want to blurt it out. But it's important to know that coming out each and every time is a vulnerable thing. And part of it for me was concerned about your vulnerability. Um, and the other part of it is, it is actually a personal journey as well. There's an element where you, your work on professional boards has nothing to do with your sexuality. Um, and so it needs to come up in the context of a conversation, not be pronounced. And that also normalizes it because people don't talk about their wife or their husband or those things unless they're talking about an event that happens on the weekend and that's the place where you talk about it. That's the place where it happens in a normal. So to normalise it and then it becomes less intense and it becomes more about you as a person than you as a sexual being. Yep. What do you see as the challenge of being both LGBTIQ and also a person of faith? I think that you become a minority within a minority. What I've found is that you're sometimes not welcome in the gay community because you're a person of faith, and you're sometimes not welcome in the faith community because you're a person of the LGBTI. So you fit in either category. So you end up in this dual minority, so it can become quite isolating. Um, and the, the challenge, is also working out your faith and where it fits in and expanding your understanding of theology and all those things. But the biggest challenge, I think, is holding on to your faith and your integrity while you sit in both of those minorities. What have been your general observations about my journey over the last few years? Oh, look, I think initially you were gung-ho, jumped into lots and lots of advocacy um, and particularly, f and, and uh, timing as well probably because we went through marriage equality, we went through everything and so you jumped in on all the advocacy stuff to do with that. At times I was concerned about that and I thought that you could immerse yourself too much and, and, and deal with the 
the pain of that too much too soon. Um, but I've also seen that, you know, you had a way of really respecting your family and that they were on different journeys from you. So I've been really, like, inspired by the way you've handled that. Um, yeah, so it's been a real privilege for me to just see you grow and flourish in all those spaces. What comments of hope would you like to provide to LGBTQ people of faith as they work through their understanding of their sexuality, orientation and or gender as well as faith? You know, I believe in a God of love and God gives us the ability to love. God wants us to love and is love. And so if God's given us the ability to love someone of the same sex or someone who's transgendered or someone who's intersex, then God's given us that ability. I heard a phrase when we went to a conference which was that we are painfully challenging and fearfully awesome. And I think that we as LGBTI community of people of faith have something to offer to the community of faith, whether you're Christian or um, Muslim or Jewish or whatever, that we have an experience of transversing across different spaces and really having to look deeply into who we are and who our identity is. And the questions of faith is all about who are you, where do you come from and where you're going. And I think we have an opportunity at the LGBTIQ community to offer that back to the religious communities. So I think that we are vital to the church. And do you have any final comments about myself, my journey or any of these topics we've talked about? Look, I, I'm excited that you're um, writing this book and that you're putting your journey and your story out there so that you can encourage other people um, and, and I think that's one way that we are contributing to the church. Yeah, I, I think um, yeah, it's been a real privilege for me to journey with you and to continue to journey with you.